Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel and back to the workshop. This is the first episode of Fix It Fridays. Now that I'm publishing all of my videos on Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, I needed to figure out a way to transition the Workshop Wednesday videos to Fridays and maintain that, well, that most important alliteration. And so uh, the Fix It Fridays is what we've got. So in this first episode, we're going to revisit a project that I worked on in Workshop Wednesday number five. And in that video, I was attempting to show you how to extend the length of a shaft via splice extension. Um, I used a four-in-one rasp for that project, and it took me a long time, and it wasn't as precise as it needed to be, so I made a mistake. And uh, that mistake was basically making the splice joint on the original shaft longer than the extension piece. Um, I know how to fix that now, and the reason why is because Brad Corando watched that original video. You met Brad in the Fresh Finds Friday video where I showed you the long nose replica play clubs that he made me for a feathery set. And Brad reached out and said, hey, I know a better way we can do this project and I'd be happy to show you. So uh, I took him up on the offer right away and we uh, spent a Saturday afternoon in his, his workshop in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin, and he showed me uh, a lot of things that I'm going to show you in the next couple of Fix It Friday videos, but uh, the most important one was how to do this splice extension properly using a plane. Uh, he showed me how to sharpen my plane, how to actually use the plane for this project, and uh, that's what I'm going to show you today. So it's a little bit longer than a normal workshop video, but I think all of the information in it is important, and uh, we'll show you how to do this project uh, much better than what I originally showed you in Workshop Wednesday number five. So without further ado, let's get into uh, extending a shaft via splice extension featuring Brad Carando. For me, uh, you know, I'll, it doesn't matter what order you do the scare. Uh, you know, ideally you're making, I like to make the, the angled section four inches. Right. So like if you want to add two inches to the club, you really need a six inch piece of wood. Yeah. I'm not really confident enough in myself. To okay. That, so I just, you know. Got these dowel wraps, well, they're hickory. Yeah, and I'm interested to see how you're going to attach yeah. that splice uh, extension mm -hmm. or the extension piece because that's what I had a, a kind of a conundrum with when yeah. I was trying to do it in my setup. Was right. I need to have a longer piece in order to actually clamp it, otherwise I don't have any kind of leverage against the table to actually yeah. plane on. So I can tell you, uh, I can show you on this jig. So before I changed it, um, this side of the jig, I've got stops at both ends. The other side of the jig, I actually opened up one of the stops. Okay. So that I could get down to that very thin reed-like tip. Right? Gotcha. Um, I've made them without that though, and I made them using this jig. What I do is I start off like this, and basically, you know, I can show you, um, this is not the best way to do it, but it works actually. So I've got a smaller plane, this is a number three, a little bit smaller than yours, narrower. Okay. And what I have is the direction of the grain indicated in pencil lines. They're parallel to the grain. Yep. I've got a four inch circle that's around it. That tells me how far back I want to go. Mm -hmm. And then I have a line that's perpendicular to that circle and perpendicular to the okay. grain. Yep. Uh, yeah. That's just a guideline. Um, and it's going to disappear as I plane. But as it disappears, it means that I'm farther down in the board and I, I kind of know where I'm at. Yeah. Um, so what's great about the side with the stops, uh, unlike the other side, is that stop is there. And for a while, it's going to hold the board in for me. And so I start with the pencil line straight up. And I, I kind of peek down through my plane throat. And I see the line, it's like, oh, there it is. Okay, and so I want to just start off with a steeper angle than I need, just to get things started. So there's the line, I look for it. Boom, and you can start to see it. Yep. Okay. And I just need to adjust it a little more. So I, what I'm trying to do is have it take a little bit bigger piece of cut. So I'm just turning the wheel. This is going to lower the blade a little, make it engage the wood a little more aggressively. And starting is always the, the most, you know, precarious, well not precarious, it's just, it's kind of like, oh, you kind of got to get it going. It's like priming a pump, you know, when, the, when you first start doing the pump, water doesn't come out. But then eventually it comes. So we're going to just kind of get, check our line. Oh, and you can hear it now, it's starting yep. to grab more, right? So that's a combination of me adjusting the blade a little deeper, but also um, 
getting, you know, as you cut into this board, you're getting more surface. More surface that eventually you got enough that you actually start making little little curls. Which is yeah. kind of cool because we're almost on an end grain there. Curls on an end grain is a sign that the plane's really sharp. And yours is, and this one is, so. So you can see what's coming up. And that is that, well, eventually the stop is going to get in the way of what we want to do. Right. But at this point, let's pull it out. And let's look. And there's my lines. And there's the bevel. And I'm well, that took pretty, me about 10 minutes doing yeah, a hand fire. Right, <laughs> yeah. So, and, and that's pretty close. So there's a couple of things that, that I look for as I go from above. And that is there will be pieces of wood. And it, it could be that I didn't line this up perfectly. But you could see... That point in the grain right there, that's a cathedral. It's We're planing in the direction of the cathedral. That's good. Um, and I, you know, I tried to get that line indexed in the center of the cathedrals, but you can see that the cathedrals kind of march off to that way. If things were perfectly symmetrical about that line, these grain lines that we're seeing, they would be perfectly flat. Here, I'm kind of at an angle. Yeah. So if I wanted these grain lines to straighten out so they went straight across the board, I would have to remove more material over here. I see that, yeah. And then it would do it. So, you know, this will be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, and the truth of it is, is, you know, everybody knows that you're supposed to look for the, the grain in the shaft to run sort of parallel, you know, with the well, perpendicular. Perpendicular, yeah. Yeah, parallel with your swing is what I was yeah. trying to say. Um, you know, on these extensions, yeah, that's what you want to shoot for. Is well, and I think aesthetically, critical? too, when yeah. somebody's looking at the butt end of yeah. the Oh, the, the and grip, that's the big thing. They're yeah. going to see yeah. that. Exactly. Right. So, um, you know, from a performance standpoint on these extensions, you know, I don't know. Someone else could probably say, oh, yeah, it's still very important. Um, I don't know if it is. Uh, you know, the, the, the business end of the club is really kind of where that stress is, mac you know, maximizing. You know, and, then, and an extension, it's really in the backhand. If it's, if it's on the grip, you know, transition from one hand to the other, maybe you're getting a lot of force there. It's not that kind of force, though. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's so, that's my opinion. Okay, so now I've got a, a flat area. So what I'm using is the front edge of this plane to kind of feel it. Is, I see that, yep. And you can see, even in my planing, I'm not like 100% perfectly straight. Right. I'm just ergonomically, it's like, this is comfortable. If, you know, comfortable in a sharp plane, it works. <laughs> Probably better than straight and not comfortable. Okay, so now you can see we're making it bigger. I'm not really trying to look for a specific angle. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that to there and that to there. Yeah. That's it. And ideally, I'm doing it without cambering any of this stuff. And this is the part where Brad's out of practice. So we'll see. See how good I can do. The fact that I'm taking small shavings there means that I'm not evenly cutting across it. And I think it may be time to adjust uh, adjust our board to the other, uh, or jig to yeah. the other side. Just to, and I maybe need a little deeper cut. There we go. A little better. So as you're going, just for curiosity, you can always sort of hold this up to the line. You can see I'm not dead flat. I'm a little steep there. Right. But that's something that we can resolve. Remedy. Oops. So now we're going to try your plane. Let's just see. It's really nice. Okay. <laughs> I can tell you that. It's Good. really nice. Yeah. Um, and you can tell I was taking longer cuts with it. And look at that. It's pretty much flat. A little bit down on the tip, but not much. It's going to be good. Um, okay, so now we're just going to flip this. So now, we've given ourselves some clearance, right? But it's like, oh, how do we hold it? So, this is the part where I wish I had a Christian little cap. Yeah. I wish I had made that. 
Uh, but instead, we'll just do this, and this, this should work. Um, you just kind of have to make sure you're not rolling off the edge of it when you tighten it up, but it'll be okay. Sounds good. Yep. So, as we're going, I'm looking, and I think we're pretty flat. I'm looking at the grain. I'm looking at how close I am. I'm what, about yep. half an inch or so. I'm actually pretty good there, too. Um, you can actually see from above, you know, initially, the end of this board from straight down was just a straight line. And what's great is once you get past the midpoint of the cylinder, it starts tapering in. And you get yep. that sort of, you know, elliptical shape. So we're getting close. And now you can see I'm actually getting kind of close to the wood surrounding it. This is the part where I've modified this. So I haven't really used this part of the jig recently. I may need to stick this out a little more in order to clear it, but I'm close. Um, so for a first, first attempt at this jig, that's pretty good. And all I'm trying to do now is concentrate on being flat. Mm -hmm. um, we're maybe about a sixteenth at the bottom. We're getting close. And we're actually nice and flat. It's like good. Yeah. As we get to the end, what I'm doing is I'm just backing off the blade just a touch. I still want it to cut. I just don't want it to be too aggressive that I have to worry about splitting that. Mm-hmm. And that's much better. You can see there's some flexing going on. Right. It's something I'm mindful of. I'm not really concerned about it. You can see I've hit our four inch line. So at this point on the first piece you do, the four inch line is somewhat arbitrary. What really matters is the second piece. So if I end up at you know four and a quarter, okay, fine, four and a quarter. When we mark the next one, it needs to be four and a quarter. Right. Whatever this one is, the next one should be. Well, um, here's a good question. Or, mm -hmm. well, I don't know if it's a good question. Um, yeah. Is it good to start with the extension first so that if you go further or shorter than you originally intended that you're you're not screwing up the, the main chip? Maybe that doesn't even... So, no, I, it, it, it makes total sense. And I actually thought about this before we started. And I chose to do the extension first. Um, quite honestly... I'm out of practice. Yeah. So it's like, okay, if I am going to reintroduce, you know, myself to the muscle memory that's going on here, and I'm playing around with, you know, potentially a plane I haven't used before and stuff, if I screw up, I'd really rather it be on that. Yeah. Um, that being said, um, that seems like a beginner tip, though, if you're new to splice so, extensions yeah. to, to mess around with a piece of wood what that's expendable do, and not the shaft what first. I would do is kind of what I had prepared for us if, if we got to that point. I made a bunch of these, mm -hmm. and you know what? If you get to a point where if you've done this uh, and you decide, yeah, you know, actually I can do these first, and it worked out fine, guess what? If you're doing the whole thing of memory, and trying to, you know, rekindle your muscle memory and all of this stuff, you know what? Just pre-make a bunch of these things. Yeah. Why not? Right. I'm gonna, then that's what I'm going to do, just so yeah. you, have them, you have them ready. Yeah, Just exactly. do a bunch at once. Exactly. Yeah. These are all three quarters of an inch of diameter, which I think will be quite well. I don't. I haven't really encountered a shaft that was bigger than three quarters of an inch. Yeah. So it should be okay. Okay. So what I'm seeing is a little bit more flex than I'd like to see there. It's it's okay. Everything's nice and flat. I'm just a little concerned though. Does that mean you're taking too much wood from? The no, it's not. It just means that there's there, okay. So as this gets thinner, thinner. Well, it, it's the resistance to the load that I'm putting on it is going away because there's less material to resist. Yeah, it. So it's okay. going to flex. Same idea as why, why do our golf shafts flex when we swing it? Well, you know, we're putting more force on them than the shaft. And it's because there's nothing to brace. Yeah, exactly. So my concern is this is precisely like, okay, if it is flexing, I don't, I, I just want to try to keep that flat. And so I just want to maintain the curl as I'm going down. I don't want to cut less because then this will be thicker and kind of doing that kind of a thing. Right. I don't want it to be more. So if you were off, and this is a total Brad thing, and it probably there would be a bunch of people that maybe say, 
maybe that that's not right if 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 you weren't a hundred percent flat i would much rather see the tip of this thing curl up a little mm -hmm. so that you end up with this just slightly concave because i feel like then as we glue this and you know we're talking about hide glue that you don't really have to clamp but you know the hide glue will hold it in place but you could if you had just a little bit of concavity there um Boy, you could take a, a little one of those little springy clamps and just throw it on there, and it mm -hmm. probably close the gap. Once the hide glue sets, you're done, and it, it'll be super flat and tight. Yeah. And we're getting close. Um, this shouldn't really, I mean, it theoretically will come to somewhat of a point. It should be a, you know, ideally it's a mirror image of whatever this shape is. Let me do this. Highlight it. A little flatter. I'm working really close though. That is nice and springy. I mean, I'm looking at it thinking I'm not going to do too many more passes on it. And uh, we're, we're like really good. So, nice so I, was, I was close in at least the fundamentals of how I was crafting the splice. Mm -hmm. I was just doing it way too time consuming. Yeah. Uh, um, hand. Well, like, yeah, the, doing, uh, you were using like the rasp, I think. Yeah, I used, ra yeah. used rasp. You know, in theory, yeah, that, that'll work. Um, it's just, it's not the easiest way to do it. No. <laughs> it's you know, and, and the irony is, is that you look at a rasp and you think, well, it doesn't require more skill than a plane. A plane requires much more skill than a rasp. I mean, look at the two things. That looks complicated. And yeah. Well, the rasp is just like a metal stick with barbs on it, right? Right. It's pretty simple. I feel that, yeah, there's a learning curve with the plane. And, you know, a sharp plane, that's a must. Knowing how to adjust it, also a must. Those are, are skills that are worth developing if mm -hmm. you want to do this. Mm -hmm. And once you master those, and I wouldn't even say master, once you just become proficient, the actual job that you want to use the tool for is far more easy with that and requires less skill because the rasp, as simple as it may seem to stroke that back and forth, you realize it is exhausting. Yep. And it's actually very hard to get it straight. Yeah, I was lucky on the one that I did the video yeah. on that uh, it was mostly straight when I put the level on it. Yeah. And, um, you know, what but I, I think would, that was kind of yeah. luck. <laughs> I I, uh, I would say, uh, you, know, you know, plane versus rasp, uh, obviously the plane is the way to go. Yeah, if I didn't have the plane, I'd put a real, real thought to a disc sander, mm. stationary disc sander. You can get like a bench top model, they're pretty yeah. cheap. Get a wheel that's, you know, a good size wheel. Um, you know, ideally like an eight inch wheel or more. Um, and then what you want to do, you don't stop there because they all come with metal tables with little grooves or like miter gauges and stuff. Yeah, you're not going to have a miter gauge that, you know, replicates the angle that you need here. What you do need to do is make a wooden jig at the angle that you want it to be at. And then, well, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. You can just, you know, put plane up on your bench, put the miter gauge in, put your wooden angle jig in. It's kind of a no-brainer at that point. Yeah. yeah. And that's the fastest way to do it. Right. And, and in the end, you know, even if you're adept with, with the plane, it's probably more precise. I mean, yeah. the, the, you can achieve the same results. I think you could probably do it with, with less expertise with the, uh, with the plane. Yeah, and then that with actually, the that's, that, that brings up a good point about it is a lot of these projects working on hickory clubs could be quicker if you used yeah. modern power tools to do it. Yeah. Um, but there's something interesting to the concept oh, of learning. Without it, without it. And, and I would say yeah. that, you know, too often you hear, um, and I do not consider myself a professional that anything would work in, um, at all. Uh, but too often you hear a lay person, you know, look, you know, when they're looking at a, a true craftsman's work, and you know, they crash and because they're in the profession, they have tools, mechanical tools that does the job because time is money and they mm -hmm. need to make it. Right. Um, but they, you know, a lay person will often look at the work that's done and say, oh, oh, instead of saying, wow, what a beautiful cabinet. It's like, oh, I wish I had that table saw. If I had that table saw, yeah, I'd be making cabinets like that. <laughs> 
yeah, well, you could endeavor to make cabinets like that. Right. But it's not the table saw. Right, right, right. Right, and so yeah. that's, I think, like this point with the sander. It's like, yeah, the sander, with with the right understanding of what you're doing, yeah, the sander is a faster way to do it. Um, but it doesn't replace the, you know, the knowledge that's required of, like, you need to match the angles. You need to look at the grain. Yep. You know, the other thing is we're in my basement. You know, up above is my master bedroom. And you know, I kind of like to stay up late, mm -hmm. and my wife likes to go to bed at nine. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this versus a sander, yep. which works better. Right, right. This does, and you know, this has got shavings and stuff. Doesn't have dust. You're right. I mean, I use a sander. I, you know, I think they're great. Um, I use plain for this, and in to be totally forthright, you know, I've done a, you know, I don't know, maybe a dozen or more of these spice joints at this point. There's been like one that I just kind of boogered up, and it was on the club. It was on a nice shaft. Um, it was too short, but it was a good shaft. And you know, I got to a point where it was like, okay, I can chase this demon down with the plane, but you know what? I'm a little tired today. I know where my head is right now, and it's not in the right space. And I really want to golf with this club on Saturday. Okay, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah, I brought this hander out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like within two minutes. It took me longer to set it up than it did to actually do it. Yeah. It was just like a tweak. Right. Um, you know, in the end, it was like, good. I was happy. I fixed it and stuff like that. There was also less satisfaction. So I felt like, oh, man. You know, yeah. I was defeated. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, what what is it? You know, it's like the whole thing. We're like, well, I think we know that today was, you know, a success. But overall, we know that, you know, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, right. How we went about the success wasn't really the right way. Um, so there we go. We are... As we can see, we're not at four inches. That was my goal. Um, instead, uh, it's easier to read. Okay. Huh? Let's see what we're really at. We are really at yeah, like four and a strong three sixteenths. So I kind of missed my mark. Not by much. Um, so. Okay. There we go. We got one down. Half of it's done. You know, remember we were, well, we were starting at uh, four inches, but you know, as it turns out, it's four and strong three sixteenths. So I'm going to just take that four and strong three sixteenths, and you know, the the top of this is domed, which is not you know not unusual at all. So I'm going to want to measure it from the edge, not the not the tip. You know, it's it, quite honestly, it, it's doesn't have to be that precise it's may not be a, a shared opinion with other people but my experience with my skill level is yeah it's fine um, okay so this is like a six inch so we got one two three four and strong three sixteenths so we'll call it three sixteenths right there and then this might be the trickiest part of the whole endeavor <laughs> and that is just to simply try to get this to go evenly around and you can see I'm not really doing anything real precisely other than I've got a nice parallel edge there and I'm just trying to draw a line that's perpendicular to it we'll see how good I did as we come around well, I'm a little off but not too bad okay not terrible all right so now um, the next thing we need to do is to figure out the direction of the grain, which actually this grain is kind of, what we got here? It's pretty much level. So what I'm looking for is a line that is kind of perpendicular to that. I'm just going to make a little index line right up there on top. So I think, and Christian, you can steer me if I'm a little off, but I think I'm pretty close, right? It's looking good. Okay. So then, um, Use the most fancy marking gauge in the world <laughs> there is, which is my finger. And just do that. And it's actually usually pretty good. So there's our, our index line. You'll remember on my little blank. So that's pretty great because mm -hmm. what I see is that the club is a little bit longer than this one. Well, I marked all of these at four inches, so. Yep, so it looks like we've got Seems the right. Seems like I did, right? Um, okay. And, okay, so now it's always a little more challenging on the club than, I think, the little piece because we've got 
this part of the club to deal with. Um, and what's fantastic is our index line is up. That puts the club head up. That was intentional, um, but also important that the grain was the right direction, I think. So we're just going to kind of slide this up, very similar to what we did before. Um, instead of going to the other side, I'm just going to clamp it and, you know, we'll just see how it goes. I'm going to start with the end of this being just a little bit proud of the end of my jig. And I'm going to get my clamp out here. And again, this is the, the time uh, where I think, oh yeah, I really do need to make that little clamping jig. So we'll see. So I'm pretty firmly in there. Um, the fact that we're dealing with wood that's actually just a little bit you know, softer than this wood, that's great because if anything, this will dent and that won't. You might scuff the finish a little bit, but probably not too much. Um, and off we go. And my, my index line is a little bit tilted, but I think that'll be fine. So we'll start with uh, your plane, Christian. Let's just see okay. how it does. Yeah, I'm very curious. Okay, so I'm a little floppy here. You can see. We'll just see how that goes. What I might want to do is introduce another clamp closer to it. And yeah. I may, you know what? I'm just going to do that now. I don't see a downside to doing it. So all I want to be uh, concerned about here is just placing this plane far enough back before I clamp it down. I just want to make sure I'm not banging into it. Um, one is I, I don't want to damage the plane any or, you know, bang it into anything. Um, but the other is I want to be able to make sure I get the correct angle and right. I don't want to have to come in steep to clear this and sacrifice the angle we're shooting for. So now I'm going to concentrate really hard <laughs> so that I don't pass up that line. If I get to that line and I am not down as deep as I need to be, well, I'm going to try to hold that line and I'm going to start attacking a little bit at the end of this. It's a little more challenging to do it that way. So let's, let's hope, hope it works well. Again, I just start with short strokes and you know, Elmer had suggested coming in at a steeper attack to get this started than trying to start with the actual final angle. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's great advice. Yep. But it does require some thought as you get this started. Okay, you're like, okay, I can't go that angle the whole way down. Otherwise, I'll have a chamfered end and I'll be up here somewhere. Right. So you just, this is like practice is all I can say is, you know, make yourself a bunch of blanks and just play around with those and get, get the hang of it. Um, Okay, so I'm a little steep on this, I think. I'm, I'm getting kind of close. So what I want to do now is I want to flatten this out a little bit more than I have been. Um, and, and this is where you got to start being mindful of your line. Yeah, right. yeah. mindful of the line and also mindful that um, I need, you know, a flat mating surface, not a convex one mm -hmm. um, or a concave one, but... That is is the goal. Um, so I'm going to check it, and uh, my lucky day. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, okay, so I'm getting kind of close to there. So I'm going to loosen these clamps up. I'm going to kind of ease the this club up a little bit in my jig, and I'm just kind of trying to lift up the clamps a little bit. Um, just make sure you keep it. Yeah, trying to keep it flat, um, you know, and the plane will, will tell me if it's not. If it's not, it's, you know, as long as it's not, like, terribly off, it's fine. Um, it, it's really, honestly, it's, it's ergonomics. It's just trying to, you know, flat is comfortable, so let's just try to keep it flat. So, again, when I, when I talk about feel, what I'm feeling for, I set the plane down, and guess what? It, it, it almost rests yeah, right out yeah, 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 as long as you're flat, it will do that. And then that hand goes there. Guess what? Well, now you're feeling it. I'm not overly exerting pressure on this plane. I mean, I'm not pushing it down hard. All I'm trying to do is keep it stable and moving. Okay. The weight of the plane, quite honestly, is almost enough downforce to create this shaving. A little bit more by me, but quite honestly, I'm just trying to hold on to the plane and keep it, you know, flat. Okay, so I'm approaching the edge there. I'm still a little steep, as we can see. So I need to back off some more. 
You can actually see the hole from the original tack. Oh yeah. And that's not uncommon. So I'm gonna flatten this out some. So at this point, you know, that's probably not terribly successful that I'm, you know, down that early. But, you know, again, what was I worried about? I was worried about, you know, kind of coming back, right, too far. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I erred, but, you know, probably more on the side of caution. It doesn't make, you know, making the correction easier for me. Um, but at least I didn't screw up Christian's hundred year old golf club. <laughs> so, you know, I want to take that away as a W. <laughs> and I'm flat. Hey, you know, this, this could be a, more of an expert class on uh, pulling out a win from, <laughs> <laughs> from a questionable start. Look at that. I'm right on that line. I am just about done here. Done. I mean, mm -hmm. we're assuming that we're flat. Yeah. down this way mm -hmm. but we haven't checked to see if we're flat this way but it doesn't make so what I will say is um, the narrowness of this particular you know piece that we're playing mm -hmm. and the fact that we've got a plane that is you know a really good size for it honestly I, I kind of preferred the number three but that being said you know it's preference total yeah. preference if I had started doing, you know, uh, scare joints with a number four, guess what? I'd probably be telling you, oh, yeah, I really think the number four is, I like the heft, I like the additional width. You know, it's, yeah. just, it's just what you're used to. And, and that one feels more comfortable in my hands. This one's just a little wider. I'm aware of it as I use it. But that being said, this is a narrow surface. It's, it's, so, it's, so as long as you're flat yeah. there, you know yeah. you're not going to be... And I think a lot of that has to do with what I was saying about the amount of force that I apply downward on the plane. If you put more downward force than is needed on the plane, on a narrow piece of wood, and you're not, you know, you always notice, I'm, I'm what you don't, I guess, notice is you can't see what I'm looking at. Well, when I'm looking at this thing planing, I'm not looking at that. I'm not looking at that at all. I know that that is centered in this. I also know that this and the blade have the same center line, and I know that if I kind of keep that over that when I set it up, and then I start looking at my margins here, that's what I look at. Boom. I'm only looking at that, and I'm probably putting my eyes at the throat. Okay. It, you know, initially you'll remember I had a line there, and I was actually using that line as just kind of like, okay, first cut. Where's the line? Boom. You know, and it's kind of up here. Mm -hmm. But then as I start flattening it out, I'm always like, oh, there's a pencil line as I go. Um, and it's right there. Um, if I were to put more force on it, I think there would be a chance that if I'm not perfectly centered and I'm putting more force on it, guess what? I'm pushing it. Yeah. Down. And then, then you're going to start to and make it you're more crowned. So, so centered, but then easy, easy. It is so much easier to play the board than it is to swing a golf club and it's not <laughs> fall out. It's just, it is. So, um, there you go. Another advantage to hickory golf is like, you know, if you, if you, uh, <laughs> if you're unable to become a good golfer like myself, uh, you have a better chance of becoming a better woodworker. Um, well, and I think right now I'm a better club maker than I am a uh, golfer, but I yeah, enjoy the club I, making, in fact, more, I, sometimes more than the playing. I, <laughs> yeah, I honestly, if, if, I I don't think I would lose sleep over not playing golf again. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I enjoy it. Yeah. But, yeah, you know what? If, but if you're like, yeah, you can't really work on the wood stuff anymore. Yeah. Even clubs. I love making long nose clubs. It's, I, I never, modern clubs, old clubs, anything. I have never achieved the enjoyment and satisfaction, even close, uh, on a golf course that I have down here making the clubs. That's cool. It's just, yeah, it's kind of what I wanted to do. It's pretty good, right? I mean... That looks really good. It's, you know, I don't know if we... what looks good. I mean, everything's really flat. Yeah. And flush. You know, and our diameter is actually, it's pretty good. That's, I mean, that's just a three-quarter inch hickory dowel rod. Actually, there's a place in Ohio that I ordered it from, Hardwood Lumberyard Company. Pretty reasonable. They're, uh, for 48-inch dowel rods, they're less than $7. And you can order as many as you want. Um, you know, expect, you know, some real awful ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so just order a bunch. I mean, or I think I, you know, not a bunch. I ordered like a dozen. And of the dozen, the six were very usable for shafts. 
Um, and for, yeah, full, full shafts. Yeah, for full yeah. shafts. So uh, theoretically, if we wanted, mm -hmm. we could have an extension up to another. As long as you want. That's pretty long. Scare joint is a crazy strong joint, and whenever you're using the really good height glue that's super strong, yeah, it's. You know, I'm sure there's an experienced club maker out there that could tell you, well, you know, it's not a great idea. It's going to come apart. Um, I think that you know, on the on the border of, you know, probably beyond the border of ridiculousness, you, I think you just don't want this joint anywhere near the flex. Right? Yeah. Because it's not going to flex. It's, right. It's going to be really rigid. Um, so, you know... I, what do they say? Like, you know, good rule of thumb is you try not to extend the shaft about more than two inches. I think that's like, you know, yeah. what I've heard. I don't, I don't know. I think structurally, though, I mean, at the end of a grip. You... Uh, what I would say is this. It's probably, you know, and the, you know this is like where experienced people should, should chime in. But my opinion is that I think as you lengthen the shaft, the factor is probably not construction or can you do it. I think it's going to be at what point does the shaft length with the weight at the end of it become too whippy for the diameter that's already predetermined here. Yeah. So what I would recommend is if you if you really want to push that boundary, I think maybe it'd be fun. I just now thinking of this, but and I could be wrong. Maybe what you want to do is is cut one that's like intentionally long, right? Go out and just start, you know, glue it up, do some friction tape for your temporary grip, start swinging and just see does it get whippy i've extended clubs that definitely got more flexy i wouldn't call them whippy but they definitely changed characteristic wise yeah and i think i was doing like two and a half inches okay but again i i was starting with kind of an unknown you know i i don't know much about you know the shafts and how to measure like pre pre-measure how, how whippy they are but that that being said you know i think as long as the the splice is not down where you want the shaft mm -hmm. to flex i think it's the user determination so. all right so now we're moving on yeah. to the hide glue let's glue this thing up oh, no. yeah, so this is this is very traditional hide glue uh, which is just dry um, it's not wet hide glue um, it's 315 gram strength they come in different strengths that's the highest that I've seen I, there may be higher ones it's this is what you want to do for anything structural with your golf clubs and uh, the, it's a process it's can't you kind of go by feel it's a little cup that is in a bath of water. It's like a little old-fashioned. And double where did you toilet. get that uh, set up? You, you uh, that, that I think online. I bought from Lee Valley Tools. I think they're a Canadian company. They're online. They actually make good quality stuff, um, reasonably priced. And this is for woodworkers. Um, and the size of the pot, you will see. Like if you look at old archival kind of photos of you know what was in a, a Scottish club making shop in the day, they use the same setup. Uh, their their pot was much bigger because they're doing a lot of golf clubs, right? So, um, so about three teaspoons roughly. You pour in just regular tap water. Uh, you cover up the, the powdery kind of granular glue. It absorbs. It's hard. It, it almost looks like. Um, it feels like, smells like, a, like kind of like a ground up rawhide chew for a dog. Okay. Um, and so you put water on it, it absorbs the water, and then the water just like disappears. Pour more water on it. You're always trying to cover the, the glue. And you get to a point to where the glue sits for a while and it gets kind of rubbery, like those old fashioned uh, erasers that you would see in art class. Uh -huh. They're kind of that color actually. Yeah. yeah maybe they had something. What you want is, so, so when it gets like that, it gets all kind of rubbery. Then you close the lid and you turn on the heater. The heat will turn it from that granular rubbery form into a liquid. And ideally what we want is thin honey. It's kind of what we have there. It's, so if this was too thick, if it was not running like that, at this stage, I would just add more water. Okay. And if it was um, too thin, I would add some more height glue. So we're going to close that up for now. There's different ways to apply it. A brush is best. Um, height glue is pretty cool because um, you will apply it. It's, it's warm. Um, and as it turns to room temperature, which is fairly quick, um, it's done. It's like kind of ready to go. I wouldn't go out and swing it. I'd probably wait a day, but quite honestly, it's got most of its strength already. So what is another advantage to using hide glue in this kind of application 
is that it's, you know, Christian and I had talked, it's kind of challenging sometimes to clamp two cylindrical objects together um, because, especially on a skier joint, because they kind of want to do that or they want to kind of do that. Right? Yeah. So, um, high glue is pretty fantastic because it gets real grippy real quick. In the nature of drying and curing, it will actually draw the two surfaces together by itself, which is in a way like its own plant. Um, so I was also telling Christian, it's a completely uh, adjustable, repairable joint. So like if we glue this and I really mess up and it's like that, <laughs> um, it'll be it'll be like stuck and we'll be like, oh no. Um, all you need to do is heat it up. You can use a heat gun, hair dryer even would work. Um, heat gun, be careful. You don't want to burn the wood. Um, once it gets warm, it releases. It's liquid again. And the great thing is you don't have to put more hide glue on. As long as it's still on the wood, just put it back together. Let it cool again. It'll be fine. Is this not trying to... Yeah, you're just trying to put some... Yeah, and I'm going uh, kind of perpendicular to the grain. Yeah, and it's a little more toothy. Not, not a whole lot of texture. So I'm just going to do it on this surface this time. And again, the, the, the end result, the, it'll be just as strong. Okay, so nice and even on that. And And the other thing I'm going to do is just keep this club in my jig as opposed to moving it around. this in real time because I'm really curious to see how yeah it didn't have yeah. to wait very long I'm yeah and, and uh, you know honestly I was ready to remove my thumb a little earlier um, yeah but I was glued to the <laughs> and I didn't want to like yank yeah. it because that's what happened last time the issue was I had something glued to it and it exerted more force than the glue was capable of resisting at the moment so I mean and I just sat there with my latex gloves on, you know, maybe like a minute or two longer. Yeah, it would have just probably left a little piece of blue. Yeah, I'm just it. saying um, that off. So that was it. But here it is. Um, so you know, to err on the side of caution, you know, I, I, I like to be that way. Um, I will usually leave them for about 30 minutes. So the glue goes from being liquid to being rubbery. And you can even see it's starting to set just from sitting there. Do you dispose that brush or do you clean that I off? I don't. I, you know, and then, you know, it's a cheapie. I could. Yeah. Um, I fully intended to, but, you know, I just wanted to see what I could do with it. And the fact of the matter is, warm water, it rinsed it out, like, completely. So I've used that brush for several times. Okay. Um, and it's, like, a super cheap 59-cent brush, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and a coffee stir stick. All right. And so then, yeah, the last step here is once that's, once I get this home, basically, mm -hmm. I'm going to cut that to the length that yes. I want. And then just sand the edges, you know. it's Yeah, yeah sand the edges to make those nice and, mm -hmm. and clean. Yeah. And then I'll round the end of the grip so that it's not yeah. just, you know, sharp there. Right. And then put a grip on it and you're good to go. Right. Yeah, I think you're, you're going to be good. Um, yeah, you really can. Like, I, you know, um, when I was in the process of doing a number of these joints, um, all total, you know, um, you know, making both, both of the, you know, sides of the joint, um, gluing it, um, maybe like thirty-five minutes each. Yeah. You know, not the glue time, but you know, it was just sitting there while I was doing some other stuff. Um, so about thirty-five minutes. I mean, and you know, I have a lot of experience with planes and things like that. But quite honestly, it, it's once you learn it, it's not hard to learn. Yeah. Um, so even if it took someone forty-five minutes, I mean. That's not too bad. No, and if that's still use, half the time than it was taking me to do the yeah, rest. And if you were to try to, you know, I've also, when I first started, I was doing extensions with that little dowel 
set up. Um, it's not really a great way to yeah. extend a shaft. It, no, you know, that being said, I've never had one fail, ever. Um, so, yeah. you, know, you don't want to go real long with them. Um, they're not as good, and right. this is this is a great way to do it. And then this is intimidating when you look at it. The dowel jig is like, there's this sense of, I think, security in doing it because, oh, it's a jig and you use a power drill. I have a power drill. Right. I can buy the jig. Yeah. You know, okay. And it, there's a lot of truth to that. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty pretty easy to do. Um, this is a skill set that people don't have. Most and I think, you know, in the spirit of what we're doing with Hickory Golf, it, there's a value in learning how they used to do this yeah. stuff and that it's still probably, you know, the the best way yeah. to do it. Yeah. Even today. Yeah, and I, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, hundred percent, I agree with that. And again, I, I do think it's it is really not that hard to pick up the skills to do this. It's not like you're building, you know, a cabinet. Right. It's just you know, get a plane, use it. Okay. And, yeah. Good. Thank you very much, Brad. You're welcome. Happy <laughs> to do it. Okay, welcome back to my workshop. I hope you enjoyed that session with Brad Carando showing you how to properly extend a shaft via splice extension. Uh, one thing I wanna mention uh, that isn't in the video that I think is important um, is that we actually did the gluing process of the two joints with the hide glue twice, and you saw the second attempt. Uh, the first attempt, the only reason I didn't show it to you was because it would have made the video a lot longer than it needed to be, uh, but it's worth mentioning. And uh, Brad was wearing latex gloves for that first attempt only because the hide glue can get kind of messy and he was trying to keep his hands clean. No other reason than that. But what ended up happening was when he was holding the two joints together, uh, the latex gloves stuck to the shaft. And uh, actually, when he tried to pull his thumb off of the shaft, it pulled the whole joint apart. So we just started over from scratch and um, Brad added more tooth to the two joints using the four in one rasp and then the attempt that you actually saw in the video was the second attempt and it worked great. Uh, and you saw that it only took a matter of seconds for the hide glue uh, to start adhering the two joints uh, just with a little bit of pressure. So I uh, just wanted to mention that and um, Brad wanted me to keep it in the video but uh, like I said for time's sake I needed to take it out. Uh, and otherwise, it would have just been too long of a video. And uh, But I do think it's worth mentioning that even Brad, somebody who's done this uh, process several times, he's done it over a dozen times now, um, he, he wanted to mention even he can make a mistake uh, in the process, but it's a very easy thing to fix, uh, especially with hide glue. Uh, the other thing that I'll mention that's not in the video is I used to do these kinds of uh, joints. Uh, I used to adhere them with epoxy. I'm not going to do that anymore now that I'm going, to do, I'm going to use hide glue going forward. But the beauty of hide glue, and this is you know evident in the in the mistake that we made when Brad stuck his uh, you know latex glove to it and pulled the joints apart. Uh, all he had to do was wait a couple seconds for the the hide glue to dry, and he was able to roll it off with uh, 120 grit sandpaper, no problem, and then use the rasp to add the tooth. So even if you make a mistake with hide glue. Just let it dry, you know, for a couple minutes, and then you can, you know, remove the, gr the glue there really easy and start from scratch with a new, you know, new, new process of, of using the glue. Uh, you can't do that with epoxy as well. You got to wait, you know, a few hours really for the epoxy to set, and then you have to scrape it off with the rasp, and it's just way more time consuming and, and complicated than what we had to do with the high glue. So... That's all to kind of wrap up the project. I wanted to mention those couple things, uh, you know, just to show you that there are some hiccups you can come across uh, along the way, but uh, it's easy to fix. So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video and um, I'll be back next week with another one. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like and subscribe. See you next time.